So there's another video I'm actually working on, and because of that I've been starting to watch old interviews and reviews more and more. Reviews that came out around the game's releases. I find it fascinating to have them view the game with no nostalgia lenses and hopefully not a paid script given to them. Need for Speed Underground 2's crashes are laughably weak. The game doesn't model any damage at all. It's like you're watching two Did literally anybody models, else care about a damage other. model at that time? Of Reviews of games from long-lasting franchises, back when we just didn't know what would come many years later. Did you know Toonami reviewed Forza Motorsport 2 and gave it a 9 out of 10? Yeah. Toonami gives Forza Motorsport 2 a 9 out of 10. It takes more than a coat of paint to make it a thunder row. The game was great, but damn, we really just didn't know how much room for improvement there still was. Forza Motorsport 4, however, demonstrated that clearly. That E3 trailer from back in 2011 blew me away as a kid. Having Kanye's song Power played through the trailer, which was the soundtrack to the 2010s, to demonstrate the game's technical prowess and to make a metaphor about the cast they're showcasing, was simply genius. Many important features which became franchise staples, like 16 player support, which was double the amount from Forza 3's 8, the introduction of community car clubs, which had more features than in the later Forza titles. Also Rivals mode, a revamped career mode which was one of the better ones in the series, the inclusion of Top Gear and the first hints of the Forza Vista feature, which was further showcased in other gameplay trailers or personal demonstrations. The fourth installment is for many OG fans their absolute favorite, even putting it above the Horizon titles. Before the launch of the reboot coming soon, I wanted to revisit this title real quick and talk about why it's considered the pinnacle of the series for many. The career in Forza Motorsport 4 introduced the world to a structure, and where the game is divided through multiple divisions spanning from amateur, clubman, professional, legend, and so on and so forth. Every division has a number of events spanning tracks all around the world you need to complete, thus World Tour. Motorsport 4 was probably the last one to really represent that classic way of progression by starting in a super regular entry-level hatchback and slowly earning and buying better cars over time. Your beginner car isn't some coupe or old Japanese sports car, but probably a Chevrolet Spark or a Honda Fit. The World Tour actually resets from the beginning after finishing it, so you can rerun some of the earliest divisions in faster cars if you want to. What it essentially does is offer you a selection of events to compete in, each coming from a specific championship based on the car you're currently in. You had the choice between three, and they all gave you a different reward, either something random, a credits bonus, or maybe a driver level bonus. About the leveling system, every time you finish an event you gain a set amount of XP, which are added to your driver level and your manufacturer affinity level. Every time you reach a new level, a random extra bonus gets applied. So that randomization of extra rewards that later forces already had, like for example wheel spins, were already present here but not as extreme. For a low level unlock, you get to choose a low spec car. I think the Bugatti you won on your first spin from Forza 6 was genuinely rigged. You won a new car. Absolutely insane. You unlock cars from driver levels on a regular basis, but the real good stuff was bought away from you for a while. There was also the affinity level system. Racing in cars from a certain manufacturer granted you credit bonuses and discounts for upgrades over time. This made me consciously stick with certain cars until I got the 100% off discount. It was a pretty cool feature, but considering how much money you earn in Forza's today, it would be kinda useless. It was also better paced than later Forza career modes. The first few divisions, maybe up until the semi-pro series, most races would end in only 2 or 3 minutes. Career modes today start with 4 to 5 minute events and generally felt longer as a whole to get through. But I can imagine that depending on who you ask, you might get people who prefer the latter. Event variation wasn't super strong, but there was some stuff to break up the monotony a little with track days, where you need to either pass a required amount of cars, or win an event against another driver while avoiding those said cars, autocross was introduced here, and also knocking over bowling pins on a top gear test track and also multi-class races. Once you finished the World Tour, you could go back to the individual championships and go for 100% completion, if you were mad enough to do it. And as solid as Forza 4's career mode was, this wasn't even the game's highlight. Forza Motorsport 4's biggest element, where people created their most memories, was online. What I think every fan will agree on, is that you just had to be there. I mean duh, every multiplayer game comes and goes. But the strong community aspect that was behind this game cannot be recreated, even if the servers were fully reinstated. Let me explain. The game had a large amount of game modes and options to tailor your experience exactly to how you wanted it to be. Of course there's the regular race events, there's drag, drift, cat and mouse, different virus event types which was Forza's equivalent to tag or infected, 
Yes, they had infected in a driving game. Yes, it was actually fun. And car soccer or car football if you're America phobic, which made its debut on here and never returned after it. But the real highlight were the custom lobbies. In this game you could create your own custom sessions and customize pretty much every detail there is to customize. All of the event types you need, with every little possible change you could apply. Looking for a multi-class race with two, three or four different groups? Sure, why not? Want to remove all groups from everybody's cars and see everyone driving like their own eyes? If you really wanted to, sure. Should the race end on a set of laps or timer? Which car classes are allowed? Should the order of cars on the grid be randomized or sorted by the performance? Do you want teams to be your thing? Okay, how many? The possibilities were endless and you could also save those presets for later. The truly special thing that later Forza games didn't do anymore was being able to add AI cars to the grid and also specifically choosing which cars they're supposed to drive. So if you wanted to create something like a Ferrari vs Lamborghini team event, you could do it. And you did not need other friends for this, because in case you didn't have friends but wanted to drive with real players, you could open up your session to the public and hope for the best. This exact feature, this holy grail that kept its online components so alive, has never returned to another Forza Motorsport game. The amount of Le Mans drag events, drift events and overall cruises were hosted due to this way was just crazy. You could rename your lobby so people knew what to expect and kick anybody who wasn't complying to the rules. Those were typical PC Golden Era multiplayer features represented in a 2011 console driving game, back when it became a rarity. Forza just had this, but it took Halo until the MCC to add a server browser. People also weren't afraid to talk, so you could make some friends back then. I didn't really have friends to play Forza with, but the customizability with private matches and AI just gave me endless amounts of playtime. Despite it being a close track racer, the variety still made it feel like a sandbox in a way. As said before, Le Mans or even the benchmark test track allowed for you to mess around with friends, but the absolute gold people have been asking desperately to return ever since it left was Fujimi Kaido, a 10 mile circuit of Japanese mountain roads, which was the setting for all drift events, toge battles or hill climb events you wanted to do. Before I set a course on Mars, there was Fujimi Kaido. It was a real standout for all the circuit tracks. The track was pretty technical and difficult, but satisfying once you master it. There has been no clear explanation why it never came back, since this was the last time it ever appeared in a Forza. Other locations we don't really see anymore are for example Trimming Motegi, Tsukuba Circuit, or Reddit Depositano on the coastline of Amalfi. I know it probably wasn't a fan favorite, but I don't know, I just miss those coastline tracks. If we're talking carless, yeah, it was pretty strong too. I don't think it's one of the absolute best or the biggest, but biggest doesn't always mean better. I forgot about the early 2000s JGTC era cars that it included. And other mid 2000s race cars like the M3 GTR variants, the Ferrari F430 GTs and so on. And also the Suzuki SX4 Hill Climb Special, which was the closest thing we got to in a Scooter Pikes Peak in Forza. Pulling this thing to work around Fujimi Kaido with little to no assists is a challenge, but a super fun one. Now if your own garage wasn't enough to choose from, there were also car clubs. Now clubs are a feature that return in future Forza titles, but I think Motorsport 4 and Horizon 1 were the last ones to allow for car sharing. If you and your friends had a bunch of custom cars with their own design supply to them, they could upload them and others could drive them. Test them out, do one-on-ones with them and then switch the vehicles and do it again. It gave the clubs feature more of an importance. I'm not sure about the reason why they removed that feature, but maybe they thought progression would be too easy? If that was the case, then it definitely wouldn't matter today. Kinda sad that this feature is probably forever abandoned. One last major thing Forza Motorsport 4 introduced was Forza Vista. A kind of car exploration mode where you could walk around, open doors and trunks, even get inside the car and listen to extra commentary from Jeremy Clarkson. If you want one now, there's a man in America who can build you a new DeLorean from old parts. But he won't be the real deal until he gets on the FBI most wanted list. Coincidentally, Motorsport 4 and Gran Turismo 4 are considered the goats of their respective franchises. While I personally think Gran Turismo knocks it out of the park usually with their career modes, I guess we can exclude the PS4 and PS5 era, Forza allowed for more cooler stuff in the online department. It's in my opinion the only Motorsport title that at least touches the PS1 and PS2 Gran Turismo era. 
Seriously. And the thing is, Turn 10 knows that most Port 4 is considered everybody's favorite. Despite our numerous complaints and think pieces about the Forza franchise, did you also know that in the Forza 6 launch trailer you can see a shot of the Ford GT, which was the cover car for the game, leading a pack of cars which were mostly other cover cars from previous Forzas, going all the way back until Forza Motorsport 3. Now the Forza 1 and 2 cover cars are intentionally not there, but there's one other important one that is missing. That is because near the end of the trailer, you can see a Ford GT at them all pulling up to another driver who's sitting in a... Ford White H Speciale. I know it's not the exact model, but come on, the implication is there. The trailer cuts off after they initiate a one-on-one -on -one battle, as if to say, this is gonna be the one that takes the crown from the old one. It is confusing to me how much stuff from 4 has not been brought back over the years with little to no explanation. And while I can't say if Ford's a motorsport, talking about the reboot, or 8 if you don't like this trend either, will be a good or bad game, I can say that there's little that excites me to be honest. From what I've seen, the ray tracing does look impressive, but overall the colors kind of look washed out? Apparently progression is taking a bigger role again, but I don't know if this new car leveling system where you have to grind individual vehicles to the max before you can buy all your upgrades is a good decision. The selection of cars you start in and how much pay you get from events and other activities were usually the main concerns about the lack of progression. So yeah, progression is becoming more prominent again, but in a way literally nobody asked. Also the people who love the easier progression of the modern titles also get screwed over because if they now want to randomly create a specific build, they would have to invest a significant amount of time until they are allowed to buy the upgrades, even if they already have the money. How many cars does this game have again? And in regards to online, considering how a lot of simcade or racing sims, understandably, primarily focus on being esports friendly, I would thus never expect a word on open custom lobbies or server browsers to ever come back. Even the casual Horizon series long axed this feature for just basic matchmaking. Which kinda sucks because that would work amazing in tandem with the Event Labs custom maps feature. It is what it is. I think Motorsport 4 was the closest we got to a proper online sandbox in a close track racer. The level of customizability on so many fronts was its clear strong suit, which gave it so much replayability and memories the community created. The embargo on the Forza reboot lifts tomorrow, and we'll have to see how it stacks up to all the rest. I don't like being entirely negative. Maybe it would do better than I think. I don't think it's looking too good though, cause I'm not gonna lie, this track list and those Xbox 360 era models still be looking kinda weak though. <laughs> Six years in the making, by the way, the new era is coming. <laughs> what did you think about Forza 4, the newest one coming out? The state of the franchise in general, or maybe you got a different fan favorite for whatever reason. I wanted to make this video because I used to play the shit out of this game, and the next Forza is coming up, so why the hell not? Also, I'm more inactive with my uploads than I like to be, and I'm trying to keep this channel alive, I promise. I got a much bigger, much more ambitious video currently in the works. It's my favorite topic I've ever made a video on, and it's probably my best ever yet. You just gotta give me some time, I've been writing like there's no tomorrow. All I can say is that if you're a fan of the John Woo films, Max Payne, John Wick, anything of that sort, you definitely don't want to miss this one. Thanks for watching.